Nama Om Vishnu Bidaya Krishna Prishnaya Bhutale Shumati Bhukti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Saraswati Dive Gauravani Pacharine Nivasesha Shanyavati Prashkacha Di Satarane Vancha Kalpa Durabhya Sakrapa Sundurabhya Vajra Patitanam Bhavane Vya Vaishnavya Namo Nama Vaishnava Namo Nama Charitambuja Angam lagai te se lam mukam avata chutan takupitam chaitanya ishwaram shiguru dina taranam. Um, so I've been invited by the um, <clears throat> New Jagannath Puri Temple in Phoenix to speak a little bit on chapter 4 and chapter 5 of Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. So, um, they've asked me to do this. I'm complying with their request. Um, first, for those who don't know, New Jagannath Puri is a very, it's actually our second biggest temple in South Africa. And it's in the middle of a place called Phoenix, where there's approximately three or four hundred thousand Indian, Indian bodied people. Um, it's right in the center on a hill. Very beautiful temple. And the main deities is Jagannath, Subhadra, and Balaram. They came to South Africa in 1976 by the grace of Daranga Prabhu. And we worshiped them in the Rathiatra, the first three Rathiatras we ever did in Tongat and Chatsworth Unit 2B. Then I had them on the campaign in, in my bus and I was worshipping them and I even painted them myself once. Um, now they've been done up very beautifully and now they're situated properly in the new Jagannath Puri Temple in Phoenix. So, Bhagavad Gita. First of all, we offer our respects to Vyasadeva. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 So, just to recap, Bhagavad Gita. Gita means song. So there's many Gitas. There's Gopi Git. There is Venu Git. Um, there is Virahara Git. There is Brahma Git, the, the song of the bumblebee. <laughs> and then Bhagavad Gita. So Bhagavad Gita, in Prabhupada's own words, is elementary and fundamental. That's Prabhupada's words. Further, Prabhupada's words. It is the A, B, C, D of spiritual life. So it is a fundamental, rudimental, um, foundational sastra, scripture, to read, but to study, to absorb, and to understand. Bhagavad Gita does not describe Ras. You have to go to Bhakti Samhita Sindhu Nectra Devotion. But without understanding the fundamental aspects of Jiva Tattva, um, Maya Tattva, Karma Tattva, if you like, um, you, you can't progress further. The foundation has to be there. And the stronger is the foundation, then the better it will be. It's like when you learn to play a madanga. Uh, originally, we were taught mantras. And one would diligently practice mantras before jumping to fast beats. Um, and the longer you spent learning these basic mantras and basic beats, then when you did speed up, it would be correct. 
Now, of course, the tendency is to immediately play the fast beats and even hit the big end of the madanga with two hands. Um, so I can only presume that these madanga players practiced in their last life, <laughs> the mantras. And therefore, in this lifetime, they've skipped because we have some amazing madanga players, absolutely amazing in our ISKCON society. But I think you understand the example. So Bhagavad Gita, elementary, foundational. This is what Prabhupada said. So we're talking about chapter four. So chapter four is entitled Transcendental Knowledge. I'll read what Prabhupada has written. The spiritual knowledge of the soul, of God and their relationship. Now this is called knowledge, to understand matter, spirit and the controller of both. That is a definition of knowledge. The definition of intelligence, Prabhupada said, is to see things in perspective. And Rupa Goswami has also said, definition of intelligence is to have a sharp memory and to be able to discriminate. And discriminate, or vichar, is the same thing. It's be able to see things in perspective and not get carried away with material illusion, material coverings, or material emotions. So the spiritual knowledge of the soul, of God, and of their relationship um, this is also referred to um, Prabhupada at the very beginning, chapter 4, text 2. He describes the parampara system. Evam parampara praptam imam rajaso vidu. Um, Samahanta, sava. Uh, Evam parampara praptam imam rajaso vidu. This supreme science was thus received through the chain of disciples' succession. So this is what Parampara. And the saintly kings understood it in that way. But in the course of time, the succession was broken and this knowledge as it is appears to be lost. So Parampara, very important. Um... The word um, parampara or sampradaya. Sampradaya has been defined as party, but literally, according to Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, uh, sampradaya, as explained in Gora Gana, Gora Gana Sarup um, Chandrika Tattva. It's a mouthful, but it's a book. And it explains sampradaya. Sam means uh, connection. Sam pra means superior. And daya means correct. The correct superior connection. Sampradaya. Um, so we, of course, are in the Brahma Sampradaya. So chapter 4, text 2 explains the Brahma Sampradaya. Um, such knowledge is the fruit of selfless devotional service. So Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Priyojati. Uh, by engaging in devotional service, you automatically say knowledge and detachment. So knowledge or realization comes by engaging in devotional service. So the first sense, knowledge acquiring sense, to engage in bhakti yoga is the tongue, the mouth, or to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So, um, we engage in devotional service and um, we begin to get some knowledge. Now, there's two types of knowledge. Um, 
in terms of spiritual life. I mean, there's material knowledge, avidya, which is computers and physics and engineering and high tech and whatever. Then there's vidya, or what we would term spiritual knowledge. But spiritual knowledge can be theoretical or it can be realized. So we start off it's somewhat theoretical with a little realization. And that realization is I'm not this body, Krishna is God. Uh, the law of karma, the law of reincarnation, the modes of material nature, how they work, it's all described in Bhagavad Gita. Nature, enjoyer, consciousness. So gradually as we engage in devotional service, um, this knowledge becomes realized. First of all, it's what is called gyan, or somewhat theoretical. And then gradually matures, like boiling milk matures into cream, it matures into vigyan, and you begin to realize. So this realization is not called faith, or in the Western religious terminology, the word faith. It's, it's a very vague word in the West, faith. But in Vedic scriptures, faith actually means vigyan, some pratyakshavakamam dhamam, direct perception of the self by realization. It's tangible, it's real. It's not vague, airy-fairy. Carrying on with Prabhupada's definition of chapter 4, the Lord explains the remote history of the Gita. So I just explained that. This knowledge was lost and it had to be re-established. The purpose and significance of his periodic descents in the material world and the necessity of approaching a guru. So in chapter 4, uh, Krishna explains why he appears. So this is very important. Um, chapter 4, text 7. Whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practices or descended into Bharat, and a predominant rise of irreligion, Adamasya, at that time I descend myself. So this is very famous verse, 7 and 8. Yada yada hidaramasya, glanye bhaviti parata, in text 8, they go together, 7 and 8. To deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to re-establish re -establish the principles of religion, I advent myself millennium after millennium. So this was paritranam sadhanam, sadhu, to protect the sadhus, vinashaja dusk, to destroy the demons. Annihilation, actually. Dharma, samstapana, tayo. Samstapana, to re-establish Dharma, religious principles. So these two verses go together, 7 and 8. Then 7 and 9, uh, chapter uh, verse number 9, chapter 4, text 9. This verse is probably being quoted by Prabhupada. Um, well, the verse he quoted the most and gave most talks on, I understand, is chapter 7, text 1. But this also, he quotes many, many times. Janma kama chame divyam evam yovati tattvataha chakvate apana jami nachimam ediso arjuna. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities, karma, does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains to my eternal abode, O Arjuna. Very famous verse. So, um, shooting ahead, the one verse in the entire Bhagavad Gita which describes the importance of the spiritual master <laughs> is 434. So we're, we're going ahead. And that verse now, 434, it's the only verse which stresses uh, directly approaching a guru and the mood in which you approach the guru. And it's very famous. Tadvidi Pranapatena, Paraprasena Sevaya, Upadakshanti Te Gyana, 
Jnana Tattva Darshan. Just try to learn the truth, Tattva, Tattva is truth, by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively. You don't challenge. And render service unto him. The self-realized souls can impart knowledge unto you for they have seen the truth. So one has to render service. And as you render service, then the knowledge changes or condenses or transforms from what is called gyan, theoretical knowledge, to vidya or realized knowledge. So 434 is a very important verse uh, in the Bhagavad Gita. Because of time restraints, I'm just going over very quickly. So now let's try chapter 5. Karma Yoga. So actions in Krishna consciousness. Karma Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga. Now, from what I've understood, Karma Yoga means to engage in fruitive activities. Your main objective is to link up with Krishna, but you're attached to fruitive activities, which is Karma. Whereas uh, Karma Mishra Yoga, uh, Mishra means mixed, is you engage in what appears to be devotional service, but really you're more interested in material gain. And there are many people like this. They want a peaceful life. Uh, they like to be pious. But their, their main aspiration is not to become uh, an associate of Lord Narayan and Vaikuntha or Krishna and Vrindavan, but it's uh, to enjoy material opulence. But they're also very pious. So this is also a great soul. Anyone who approaches Krishna for any reason at all is a great soul. It's described in chapter 7. So Prabhupada gives a definition now, chapter 5. Outwardly performing all actions, but inwardly renouncing their fruits. Outwardly, one engages in eating, sleeping, and you're a family man, you're married. You have wife, you have children, you have husband, you're a housewife working. So outwardly you engage in what appears to be food of activities, but inwardly your main interest is to develop love for Krishna, Krishna Prem. This is the ultimate goal of life. So outwardly performing all actions, inwardly renouncing their fruits, the wise man, purified, by the five transcendental knowledge. So that's chapter four. So this is why chapter five comes after chapter four, naturally. Purified by the five transcendental knowledge, attains peace, detachment, forbearance. Forbearance means tolerance, means patience, spiritual vision, uh, and bliss, ananda. So, chapter 5, also very important. Um, of course, the most important verse in the whole of chapter 5 is 528, which Prabhupada also chanted many times, 529, sorry. And he called it the peace formula. So, we're jumping ahead. A peace formula. It's actually the last verse. <laughs> Bhaktaram Jagatapisham Sava Loka Maheshwaram Shredam Sava Bhutanam Gyantam Amshantam Richiti. A person in full conscience of me, knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, the Supreme Lord of all planets and demigods, Sava Loka Maheshwaram, Sava, Sava Loka. Loka means planets, planetary systems, loka. Sava means all. So the Supreme Lord of all planets and demigods and the benefactor, Shridam Sava Bhutanam, the benefactor of all jivas, Bhuta, Bhutanam, attains peace, Shanti, from the pangs 
of material misery. Prabhupada called this the peace formula. Purport, the conditioned souls within the clutches of the illusionary energy are anxious to attain peace. I remember giving out a leaflet uh, in London, Oxford Street, and when I was collecting also in Ireland, and it was called the Peace Formula. So these three points. Uh, the first point, uh, that all austerities, all sacrifices, should be aimed at satisfying Krishna. Nowadays, people are austere or may dedicate their lives to defending their country. Like in America, go and fight for your country in Iraq or Iran or Afghanistan or whatever. Uh, sacrifice uh, for your community. Um, but all austerities should be done to satisfy Krishna. So Krishna is the purpose of all sacrifices. Number two, he's the owner of everything. He's the owner of all planets all living entities, Supreme Lord of all planets and demigods, Prabhupada mentions, because of our Hindus, sometimes they mistake and they think the demigod, uh, perhaps Kali or Durga or perhaps even Lord Shiva, they are the supreme entity. But the demigods are simply um, extremely advanced servants of Krishna servants of Narayan and we should offer our respect to them also we should not disrespect the demigods like the gopis they prayed uh, to Kachayani but they didn't pray for a house by the sea and a color TV they didn't pray for a triple story house on Balito Bay and a Mercedes S they prayed for devotion to Krishna so one can approach Ganesh, one can approach Hanuman, one can approach Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma. Uh, we should never disrespect them. We should bow down to them and pray for their mercy that we can also become devotees of Krishna, Lord Narayan, Lord Nishingadev, Lord Ramachandra. So I mentioned the first one. The ultimate beneficiary of all sacrificed austerities. Number two, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods. And then the third part of the peace formula, the benefactor and the well-wisher. So Krishna is our well-wisher. Bhaktivinoda Thakur has said, uh, the only friend you have in this material world is the holy name. So the holy name, of course, is non-different from Krishna. So Krishna is actually our ultimate friend. In the material world, we make friendship. Often our friends, two men, may be uh, born together, like in some place, perhaps North Dean or Chatsworth. And, but then one runs off with the other one's wife. Uh, so friends may betray themselves. They may betray each other. And even if you have a close friend, uh, the time of death, you're in hospital. I think the Gandhi Hospital in Phoenix, R.K. Khan's Hospital. Um, your friend can't help you. He may be standing there holding your hand on the side of the bed. You're dying from COVID-19 or AIDS or tuberculosis or any one of a hundred diseases or just organ failure. Heart is giving out, the ticker is about to stop ticking. So uh, he's holding your hand, grasping it. And the family members, the other friends are surrounding the bed, looking at you. Some will be thinking, my dear friend, he's gone. Others will be thinking, I wonder what he's left me in his will. Uh, they have different thoughts. We don't always know. But they can't help you. That's the point. The point I'm making is these so-called friends can't help you. But anyone who helps you in Krishna consciousness is your real friend. 
This is Srila Prabhupada would sign his letters, your eternal well-wisher. So he is giving us Krishna in the form of this Krishna consciousness movement. Therefore, he's our well-wisher. And anyone who helps give us Prabhupada, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, devotional service is actually our friend. So these are the three points to the peace formula in 528. And such a person attains peace from the pangs of material miseries. So we've experienced recently with these riots, terrible riots, where people have been uh, very disturbed naturally and stress, uh, uncertainty uh, with the COVID-19 and various other natural uh, miseries, uh, uh, threefold miseries, um, earthquake in Haiti, I think some one or two thousand people, forest fires going on, then of course the whole Afghanistan thing. And then we're growing older and we're getting uh, slower, the mind is becoming slower, digestion is becoming weaker, the body is winding down, we lose our job tax. And then we decide, let me emigrate, but then there's now emigration tax. And there's a, there, soon there'll be a tax on a tax. So this is the, these are the pangs of material nature. Adi Baltic, Adi Devic, and Adi Yatmic. Adi Baltic, miseries due to other living entities, like the Taliban, like the taxman, sauce. One of our a uh, wonderful devotee who assists and helps us in Phoenix. And he's fairly wealthy. And SAS decided to investigate his income. And they're even questioning like uh, a bag of flour, a bag of sugar. Where's the receipts? Um, putting you in anxiety. Uh, so Adi Baltic, it can be the mosquito. COVID-19 is adibaltic, is misery due to other living entities. This bacteria or amoeba or, or virus, it's an entity, it's a jiva. It's a living entity. Uh, you may not be able to see it with your eyes, but it's a jiva, it's a living entity. It gets inside you through the mouth or whatever and disturbs the metabolism and possibly you may die. Every day, 32 people die from um, seasonal flu. That's just flu. That's also a virus. That's also a living entity. AIDS, that's a living entity. Tuberculosis. Uh, these are unwanted amoebas and things, viruses that may enter the body. Adibaltic and Adidavik. As I mentioned, the earthquake in Haiti, they seem to be on the earthquake route. They're always getting earthquakes. Uh, I think as far as my memory, 2010, some 200,000 people died due to earthquake. And then that uh, tsunami, tsunami uh, that flooded parts of, where was it? Mm -hmm. Indonesia it came from, but it went to where they will go for holiday, Thailand. 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 The beach, people drowned, and it's going on right now. Adi Baltic, we see they call it climate change, and they're blaming it on pollution caused by human beings, but really it's sinful activity. Human beings are engaging in tremendous sinful activity. Just consider 800,000 cows are slaughtered every day. 140 million chickens are slaughtered every single day. 200 million land animals are eaten every day. And according to Google, if you include fish, they estimate 3 billion living entities, 
fish, land animals are eaten or killed or consumed every day. Someone has to get a reaction. So, uh, Adi Baltic, Adi Devic, and it comes in the form of um, disease, but it also comes in the form of the environment. It rains too much, it doesn't rain. Uh, it's one of the, it's too cold or it's too hot. We're fortunate in South Africa, the weather conditions are very good. I only ever remember one slight cyclone, which I think was in 1987. I was doing the campaign. Uh, luckily at that time I wasn't doing it. But many places where I'd done the campaign flooded, especially in Vellum, I remember. If, we'd, if we'd the tent had been there during the cyclone, of course the tent would have blown down, but it would have been under three or four meters of water. So that I only remember. South Africa is quite reasonable. We don't get too cold. We don't get too hot. Cyclones, not so bad. Of course, sometimes water goes down. We've heard about this. So Adi Baltic, Adi Davik, and Adi Atmik, misery is due to your own body and mind. Uh, you become depressed, suicidal thoughts, uh, general anxiety disorder performance disorders, anxiety disorders. Um, there's a whole list in the American Manual of Diseases. There's, there's a, a whole list of mental conditions. Uh, schizophrenia. Uh, and there are so many different names sometimes referring to the same thing, bipolar disorder and then maniac depressive, seems to be the same thing. When I looked up the difference between a psychopath and a sociopath, uh, they couldn't agree. The experts had different definitions and they couldn't agree. Seems to mean the same type of thing. Although a psychopath sounds a little worse than a social part. Psychotic disorders. You lose touch with reality, start talking to yourself, imagining voices and stuff. So adiatmic. And then, of course, the heart condition. What is it? 30,000 people die every day from cardiovascular diseases and related to the heart. 30,000 every day. Heart attack stroke. Um, so these are the pangs of material misery. But with transcendental knowledge and devotional service, you can actually you can become peaceful. You'll never attain total peace because you're living in this material body. Only when you give up this material body and the subtle mind, suksha mind, uh, and you take birth in the Lord's pastimes, which will be here in the material world. You'll have a, a spiritual body. It's called Vastu City. Then you don't get this old age, birth, disease, death. But as long as we're in this physical body, there's going to be some problem. So we just have to learn to tolerate it. But at least our consciousness is more peaceful because we understand the ultimate goal which is self-realization, to go back to Godhead. Well, the ultimate goal is Krishna Prem. The secondary is to go back to Godhead. The ultimate is just Krishna Prem. And if Krishna wants us to stay here and preach, we will. This is pointed out by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he was preaching to the um, followers of uh, Madhvaracharya, Tadvadis, the Tadvadis. So, um, please read Bhagavad Gita carefully. It's foundational, it's rudimentary. But don't think that it's some type of lower scripture. In spiritual life, there is really no lower or higher. Everything is absolute. The more you understand the Bhagavad Gita, the better. But after Bhagavad Gita comes Bhagavatam and 
1 to 9, once you carefully read 1 to 9 canto, and then the 10th canto. Of course, you can read a little of the 10th canto now, like Lord Balaram's appearance. Lord Balaram, mm, his Rasalila. Lord Balaram dancing on the bank of the Jamuna with his gopis, Purnananda, etc. You can read in the Krishna book, Prabhupada gave us. Uh, but at the same time, there should be systematic reading. And that starts with Science of Self-Realization, Isha Upanishad, Journey of Self-Discovery. These are smaller books. And then the Bhagavad Gita. And not casual reading, but actually studying. You may go over it a number of times. Uh, and you need Bhagavad Gita study guide. There are devotees who've gone over it very carefully. And then Bhagavatam, especially Canto 1, Canto 2. Uh, again, with a study guide. And then go 3, 4, 5 to 9. And then careful study of 10th Canto, uh, 90 chapters. It's the biggest canto. Uh, Lord Krishna's pastimes and the essence of his pastimes are not in Dwarka uh, but in Vrindavan. So it's basically chapter 1 uh, to chapter 34, 35. And the most important chapters in Canto 10 is chapter 29, chapter 30, 31, 32, 33. These five chapters are like the five life heirs that the soul uh, is situated on in your body. The soul is within your body, within the area of the heart, on different life heirs. So these five life heirs. And of the five life heirs, the middle one, chapter 29, 30, 31 is the middle, then 32, 33. Uh, 33 is Rasalila. 31 is the gopis uh, feeling separation from Krishna. And this is considered the most important chapter in the entire Bhagavatam. And it's given the name Gopi Geet. Bhagavad Gita, Gopi Geet. Uh, how many verses? Gopi Geet. 18 or 19 verses. No, no, that's Venu Geet, chapter 21. So 31, I forget. But at some point or other, one also may read this. But we start with Bhagavad Gita. Foundation has to be very strong. Mm. So please study carefully Shri Prabhupada's books. He's giving us his entry into devotional service. He's giving us entry into Vaikuntha. He's giving us entry into Ayodhya, Dwaka. And primarily, the followers of Lord Chaitanya uh, are interested in Vrindavan. So he's giving us that entry into Vrindavan. Sakiras, Vatsaliras, Madhuyaras. So thank you very much for this opportunity to glorify Bhagavad Gita and Srila Prabhupada. Please continue cooperating and trying to work together. As Prabhupada wrote a letter to Brahmananda in 1968, he said, you are all limbs of my body. So he's talking about his disciples. You are all limbs of my body. If you do not cooperate, my life will become useless. So that cooperation has to be there. Thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Srila Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai, the appearance day of Lord Balaram Ki Jai, Krishna Janmashtami Ki Jai, Gopremanandi Hari Hari Bhav.